Scott Brown here, and today's exciting episode, we compare wearing a tool belt like this to wearing pants like this. How's it going there, buddy? Oh. So nine times out of ten, we wear tool belts, especially when we're doing things like this, framing and general carpentry. And basically, you know, you can hold everything you need, you know where it is, so sort of arm's length at all times. And carry one of these. So most of the time we wear these tool belts holding framing nails. Framing nails, framing guns. So like I was saying, it's great to have a tool belt for most tasks in carpentry. Certainly framing like this anyway. But now I'm gonna put some decking on top of it and that's when the tool belt comes off. Up. Mate, that looks pretty gangster. That's bro, that's the last piece of the deck, eh? Hey? That's it. Apart from the seats and the steps. Good job, mate. Good job. So these are the wondrous builder's pants. We've got the old pockets here. So we can put our decking screws in there. So I normally wouldn't switch, you know, in the same day I wouldn't switch between a tool belt and builder's pants. But the last couple of days we've just been screwing, screwing the deck off. I've just had the um, carpenter's pants on for the last few days. I just keep the knife there, uh, ruler, pencil. Sometimes I hang my hammer there. My hammer's pretty light. You know, and we're not walking far, we're just working in the same area so we can keep our drills on the ground. This is the best part. Knee pads. They go inside the pants. A lot of you guys will know that already. You've probably seen these, but here in New Zealand, we don't really wear pants like this very often, but I can wholeheartedly recommend them for a job like this because we'll keep our drills handy to where we're working. Rest on the knee pads, grab the screws and boom, screw it in, ready to go. And then another all important tool I got this one from Finishing Carpentry TV. He made a video about this. Thank you, bro. This is a wondrous tool. Using it with this Festal drop saw, which is super accurate, has been really good for this deck. When we want to find our angles, like these ones, this sucker here tells us exactly what the angle is. We just take it over and we just match it onto the drop saw. So, so light, I just put that in there. And that's basically all I need. It's been a good experiment so far. A lot of you guys will know that I've only had these for a few weeks now and um, I'm pretty happy with them. These pants have also been good for working inside. When we were doing that feature wall last week, or the week before, it's a few weeks ago now, we had to walk between the feature wall and the freshly painted wall and with a tool belt, you know, that has a square hanging out the back of it, a ruler, hammer, it got a little bit dodgy. And you've seen the size of my tool belt, it's like a parachute. So just keeping the basic tools on us and walking around, there's less chance we're going to damage a nice new wall. It wasn't really until I went to the UK that I noticed that people wore these work pants. Hey buddy. So in today's episode of Cooking with Pardo. Oh yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> Fucking chips, bro. Chips and a burger, eh? Even Chef Pardo has to succumb to the temptations of fast food sometimes. So yeah, over there in Edinburgh, pretty much everybody I worked with had pants like this. And um, then I thought I'd make it, yeah bro, like pretty much everyone now. They had belts, but um, I don't know, they sort of, some guys wore both. What do you reckon? Do you reckon you'll do the work pant thing? One day. 120 bucks there. $120 for these ones? Yeah. That, that's a no, when I mean one day. <laughs> Yeah, especially in the summer here, you, you don't really want to be work, wearing work pants like this. Some people would, I guess, but it's all shorts and t-shirts here in New Zealand. So what do you think wins? Work pants, work belt? Let me know. Anyway, back to the deck. So you're all done with this area, eh, bro? Uh, yeah, just got to put some last screws in. 
I might continue framing the seat then, rather than doing the decking. Ten mil gap workout? Probably, yeah. By the time I had three mil, three mil, six mil. Oh yeah, and then you get a proper overhang, yeah. Yeah, that yeah so that's sort of what I love for. Cool. Wind just picked up, eh? Hey? Yeah, that wind, man. So I cut these blocks here for the seat out of six by two. All these posts are at the same height more or less, but I just go a little bit above it so our decking will clear it. I do the two end ones first. Sorry about the wind if it's... I get them where I want them. I've made this block here 75 because there's going to be a 45 there for the frame like we did the other seat and then 19 mil of decking and then a 10 ish mil overhang there and then plumb with that so it all line up We've finished framing all the seats there and this seat here. And the next step is the decking on top. But look at this. Look at this, guys. This is a problem. I can't put that screw hole in there. What am I going to do? Wow, I'm glad you asked. We're going to drill in here. We're going to do the same here. This is a hot tip. You can use it if you like. This is where the, the real action happens. Okay, take it off. You get this here like this, okay? You put something I've prepared earlier down here, and then you go like this. Oh my god! Hey, how about that? Do the same down the other side there. You screw that in, you thank me later. It's a hot little tip. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, your van's a f***ing mess, bro. What are you talking about? It's fine. Gifts and free s*** everywhere. <laughs> Bloody hell. Alright, see you in the next episode. Bye, guys. Bye. Let's have a little look at this.